We are less than a month away from the trade deadline, and with that in mind, it is time to talk about the most likely Raptors to get traded this season. What's up everybody? It is JJ Buckets. I've told you what we're doing today, so just before we hop into the video, just make sure you are leaving a like on the video. It helps the algorithm so much and it's so appreciated by me. And if you're new here, subscribe to the channel as well. Plus, if you plan on doing any responsible sports betting in the near future, just make sure to check out my link in the description below. You will get a very good sign up bonus with it, so take advantage of that. Without further ado, let's hop into the video. Starting off the list here is going to be Chris Boucher at number three. Now, Chris Boucher is obviously a fan favorite, largely due to the fact that he's Canadian, but also due to the fact that he is a very quality bench player. So why would the Raptors move on from him? Well, I think it makes a lot of sense here. So we've already seen reports that, you know, if any quote unquote blockbuster goes down, Chris Boucher is likely to get moved in the process. But I do believe that a Boucher move makes sense for a few reasons. And I think this is chiefly in the scenario that, you know, the Raptors do decide to kind of fold their cards for this year and move on to next year. Chris Boucher is already 30 years old. He's one of the older Raptors on the team. So if you're looking to go in the direction of a youth movement, it's probably a guy that you kind of get out of the way, you know, so your young guys can get more minutes as the season goes on so they can develop and have more PT and you, you get the idea, right? But also just the other big reason I think with this one is, and it's especially interesting tied to the blockbuster thing because Chris Boucher's contract is a very healthy salary filler type of contract with where it is in kind of that like 10 million range. If you need to match contracts to get, you know, certain assets back, Chris Boucher is a very natural name to have in there because of the money that he's making. Like simply put, he makes trades easier to process because of the financial repercussions of it. So those two facts coupled together, I think makes Chris Boucher a very tradable piece as we kind of move towards the deadline and the Raptors move closer to a decision on what they are gonna do with this team for this season. Number two on the list is gonna be Fred Van Vliet. Now, I did just drop a video kind of talking about my feelings on Fred Van Vliet and the reception I believe that he's gotten from fans this year. So you can go check that out if you want. I thought it was a solid video. Um, but with Fred Van Vliet and why I do still believe regardless of my feelings or anybody else's, quite frankly, on Fred Van Vliet, the reason that he is a very tradable, you know, piece here, or a couple of things. Number one, I mean, he's only 28 years old, but even still, like, he's one of the older players. And again, this goes back to that thing that if you decide to fold for the season, that's probably one of the names that you're trading. And why is that? Well, on top of the fact that he's one of the older players of the core, he's also looking to get paid <laughs> and looking to get paid a decent bit. Now, the credibility of the reports that Fred Van Vliet wanted 114 million, sorry, that he turned down the contract that the Raptors offered him, offered him, which I believe was like four years, 114 million, has been disputed. So take that for what you will. But I don't think it's any secret that Fred Van Vliet, once again, wants to secure the bag, which all fairness to him, like, right? <laughs> like, I can completely understand that. The thing is, for the diminishing returns that you've gotten in terms of the season's product to date, are you really gonna pony up and pay Fred Van Vliet above what you've already offered him? Debatable, right? And whereas last video when I talked about Fred Van Vliet, one of the things that I briefly touched upon was the fact that we didn't really have an indicator that whether or not Fred Van Vliet would stay with the team in terms of, uh, and pick up his player option, excuse me. Now we've kind of at least gotten hints that he's not gonna pick up that player option. So with that in mind, it creates a similar situation to another player that I'm gonna talk about, spoilers, where you have a player that you have no guarantee that he's gonna be on your team moving forward when it comes to the off season. So now you put yourself in a scenario of you don't want to lose this player for nothing and quite frankly if you're not that good and the product of this team remains the same where it's very middling isn't even the word at this point, you know, it continues to be subpar and the Raptors continue losing, the Raptors continue sitting in bad seating and quite frankly if the Raptors do get to a point where Again, tank's not the word, but if they do get to a point where they want to fold their cards, regroup for next season, 
there are a, there are moves here, right? So, but the thing with those moves and the thing with the core that the Raptors currently have in place is, obviously, I still don't think you're moving Scotty Barnes. You know, say what you will about the struggles he's had this season. He's probably one of the most untouchable assets on this team at, as it currently stands. I also don't think you're moving Pascal for a couple of reasons. You have Pascal obviously as your best player and on top of which I don't think anybody is going to give you the King's Ransom that you're probably going to need to move Pascal Siakam considering the high quality of player that he is and similarly so but definitely to a much more like to a smaller extent by comparison to Pascal I think you're in that same dynamic with OG Ananobi where he's had another season where he's progressed very nicely he's one of the best defensive players in the league like every single year OG adds just a little bit which makes you intrigued and interested in him as a player so I don't think you're moving on from him so the natural part of that core to look at and think as movable is quite frankly definitely Fred Van Vliet and if you are deciding that you're folding it up for this year. Fred Van Vliet suddenly goes from, you know, your starting point guard to one of the spots on this team that you're probably looking to improve, change, get something new, right? Because what you have isn't working. So I think it does ultimately make him a very tradable candidate for this team. And that leaves us with number one. And the most likely player to be traded for the Toronto Raptors this season, I think is undoubtedly Gary Trent Jr., right? <laughs> it's definitely Gary Trent Jr. Like, similar situation to Fred, where he wants to get paid in the offseason, all likelihood. I don't think there's any indicator that he is going to take the player option to stay with Toronto when he can, once again, similar to Fred, go secure the bag. And with Gary Trent Jr., obviously, he's young enough that he can command a good contract and he can easily get priced out of Toronto's plans here. But on top of everything, I think the reason that I would say that Gary Trent Jr. is the most likely player to get traded is just the consistency, just the straight up sheer consistency with which his name has been thrown around in trade rumors. Now, obviously, to some extent, take that with a pinch of salt, trade rumors can originate from teams that obviously are not the Toronto Raptors. It can be originating from you know, other teams that are just looking to get his name out there and get his name in the field, yada, yada, yada. You get the idea. But, like, it's one of those things where when you constantly have this piece of information thrown at you that Gary Trent Jr. has been linked here, Gary Trent Jr. has been linked here, Gary Trent Jr. has been linked here. The Raptors are quote unquote undeniably ha have him as available. The Raptors see him as his top trade target. Like these are things we have heard, sorry, not trade target, trade assets, apologies. These are things that we have heard all season long. And again, with the decision on his contract looming, it's a similar situation where you don't wanna lose him for nothing. And quite frankly, similarly to Fred, where if you're looking to shake up this core, again, Scotty's not going anywhere. Pascal's probably not going anywhere because, again, of the price. OG's probably not going anywhere, I think, because of the seamlessness of his role and who he is as a player, and also probably to some extent because of the price. Again, the two spots, if you're looking to shake it up for next year, if you're looking to change, if you're looking to acquire young assets, the two spots in your starting lineup that are the most changeable and the two spots that are the most natural to look at in terms of we want improvement, we want something different, this isn't working, are definitely the point guard and shooting guard spot with Fred and Gary Trent Jr. But between the two, Gary Trent Jr. is the one that's been thrown around as a trade rumor all season long, and you gotta think there's at least some credence to that, which is straight up why I think the most likely person to be traded from this Toronto Raptors team as we approach this trade deadline is definitely Gary Trent Jr. So what do you folks think? Who do you believe is the most likely Raptor to get traded ahead of the deadline? Do you disagree with any reasons for say why I thought OG and Pascal don't seem to be on this list obviously? Do you disagree with the ranking of the people that were in the top three? Is there somebody that I'm totally overlooking? 
Comment below, let me know what you want to see as we approach this trade deadline. Yeah, it's been, this has been a fun one. This has been a weird one, but this has been a fun one. Regardless though, if you're still watching, uh, please like the video. It is a massive help to me and I truly do appreciate every time you folks do it. And if you're new here, subscribe to the channel as well. Good for one video a week at the very least. So hopefully that one video a week entertains you enough that you hit subscribe. <laughs> It's been JJ Buckets, it's been real, and I will see everybody next time.